Shalom, shalom. Today's message is very simple. A word, God will avenge his people. Didn't he say vengeance belongeth unto me? Hallelujah. He said vengeance belongeth unto me. And um, take not vengeance in your own hand. There's no need to. Of course, be angry, sin not. Things can happen that can, can really upset you. Uh, because the devil goes to and fro seeking whom he may devour. What does, the, what does the Bible say? Your adversary. You know, everyone's given an assignment uh, from the devil. You know, the, where the, the, the devil comes and sends his angels. For the scripture says, uh, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, for Satan has been cast down unto you and his angels to make war with the saints. So there are demonic angels and, uh, you know, that war with you. Sometimes uh, they're right in the flesh. That spirit rises up in them. And uh, you're wondering why they always seek to attack you, attack your very soul, or slander you, or whatever it is, set you up, or do something conniving or manipulative. And um, I know there's a teaching holiness church years ago when someone's manipulating you. We may say in, a, in the natural, and they're always trying to manipulate somebody. But manipulation is a form of witchcraft because you're trying to uh, bewitch a person into doing something but that's not today's message but it's just something when you're fighting uh, all this high warfare of these demonic uh, spirits and forces and uh, you know think it not strange like the Bible says this fiery trial which is to try you you know because the devil's always trying to do something but you will come forth as pure gold but it takes faith he that en endure to the end shall be saved amen so shalom shalom Hallelujah, you know, there's a lot of things that people sometimes wonder. What in the Bible, what is heaven called? It's called New Jerusalem, right? When we read uh, Revelations 21, it tells you the names on the gates are the, are the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, Israel was a person, not just a country we know today or land, but it was a man, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob wrestled with the angel. The angel wounded his hip and changed his name to Israel, you know, so Jacob or Israel had 12 sons, right? Those are the, the, the sons of Israel. Their sons became nations or, or tribes, 12 sons or 12 tribes of Israel, 12 nations or children of Israel. We didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments while we were in the Holy Land, New Jerusalem. And so, you know, when the Khazar Empire came in and invaded and things like that we were scattered to the four corners of the earth and uh and when you see that uh the the, uh, the disciples after they were commissioned to become apostles and you know the messiah went on and the curtain was torn into he came back and appeared before them and all those things uh you know they became commissioned and, they, and he blew the holy spirit upon them so you know to carry out and, and there's a time when you see when Apostle Paul, of course, he was on Damascus Road and he was trying to kick against uh, and he was killing you know, the saints, you know, and uh, the Most High stopped him and said, fear him not because he's my servant. So at first they was afraid to deal with uh, Shaul, Apostle Paul, you know, but then when you see that little, that little skirmish that he had with the other apostles at one point, um, he said, I'll go to the Gentiles. You know, now Gentiles in the Old Testament was like a heathenist people. The Gentiles, people began to be considered Gentiles in the New Testament because they were no longer in the devout Jerusalem. They were scattered, you know. So Paul went to those while most of the rest of the apostles tried to save those that was right in uh, Israel still in, in Jerusalem. And what is heaven called in the Bible? It's called New Jerusalem. Heaven and earth going to pass away, but my word will be here forever right and so who's going into the those gates well whose names are written on the gates revelation 21 tells you all of the names of the sons of israel you know all of the nations after that you know and romans 11 tells you everybody that some people are just engrafted in but if you're not of the root meaning of the actual root and seed of israel then, you know, you're just in graft and then you can be cut off. You can't come against the fact that, you know, we were a cursed people because we didn't keep the law, steps, and commandments. Because he can't, Messiah, the Messiah, the Messiah came to redeem us. 
you know, he, and he said he would take us, put us back in the land, and that we are the apple of his eye, you know, so some other nations, and they try to fit in, squeeze in, and all that, but as soon as you tell them what the Messiah looked like, and what his hair looked like, his skin looked like, they get upset, they get angry, as long as he looks like them, it's, all, it's okay, you know what I mean, and think those little kind of signs show you, and when you look at the fact that the original, uh, lineage of Christ ruled all over, all over, all these other nations you see now, it was people patterned after the Messiah that was in rule, and when they were buried, they were buried with the star of David, and you look at the book like uh, Nature Knows No Color Line, you'll see that they was, they was buried, all those kings and stuff like that, King James was a king, people try to make it out and put a rumor out that he was uh, in this alternative lifestyle, no, he was married, had nine kids, a man of color, you know, so, so when you research these things, and we were ruling all over, you know what I mean, and and again, when they died, they died with the star of David, the David is, the, the star, the Megan David is not a, um, a five-point pentagram star, you know, when you look in the Apocrypha, you'll see it's the open lily, and different things like that, so we're not going to get in that long beef, because people, some people just, just don't know. And some people, you know, they get a little bit of information. They figure, let's launch an attack. But, um, but anyway, it's not about that. Let's get back to dealing with adversaries. Because in this day and time, you need great faith. I need great faith. We all need faith. Like I said, and the scriptures say, Satan has been cast down to you to make war with the saints. And this is a time of, a, it's going to take a time of great patience and endurance. You know, it's, it, we see it. You know what I mean? So you can't just say, oh, you can't believe the Bible is scripted. No, this is prophecy being fulfilled in front of the eyes. But anyway, let's get into the, to this thing because sometimes your adversaries, they can be, and they come in all creeds, shapes, sizes, and colors. So and they, they can rise, look at Judas, can rise right up and betray Christ. So, um, you know, sometimes it could be a thing, but don't get in your flesh. Like a message I preached a long time ago, you know, God, or Yahweh, Yehovah, Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, Yehoshua, Jesus, Emmanuel. He will show you, but it's not for you to react. But if he don't show you, how would you know? You know, just like King David said one time, if it had been an enemy, I could, and I'm going to paraphrase it, if it was my uh, enemy, I could have prepared myself for war to fight against him or defend myself. But I didn't know it was my own true friend that I took sweet counsel with in the temple. So that's what, that's, what, that's what vexed and hurt David. It was a friend, you know, too, that betrayed him. It wasn't just, you know. So um, sometimes these people, like, the, like that old saying since I was a kid, a snake is a snake is a snake. You know, like the snake said, carry me to the end of the road. I won't bite you. And the man said, no, you're a snake. You're going to bite me. I ain't carrying you to the end of the road. No, I don't believe what people say. I'm a good snake. Man, you know the story, man. Carried the snake to the road. Snake rose up and bit him. He said, I thought you said, and now the man's dying from the deadly venom, saying, I thought you said you wasn't going to bite me. What did the snake say? I'm a snake. That's what I do. I get down in this. That's my thing. So never trust a snake. Never trust it. And like the Bible say, beware of dogs. And it ain't just talking about the four-legged dogs, but the two-legged dogs. You know, so as I said before, so some of these things we learn the hard way. You know, we, we you know, but the, the, the Hamashiach Christ, the anointed one, oh, I feel holy, he knows that, you know, because he knew what Judas was going to do, you know. He knew he was the son of perdition. He said, did you betray the son of man with a kiss? Do what you do. Do it quickly. Do it quickly. You know? But thank the Most High, Yahweh, Yahweh, Jehovah, Yahweh, Shai, Ishai, Ayashahaya, all these. He has many names. Hallelujah. And he will write his new name on us when we get into New Jerusalem, which is heaven. But anyway... All praises, you know, Barakatha, you know, because he went on and he will not leave us nor forsake us and he will avenge us of our adversaries. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay, avenge not yourselves. 
touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. That's what the Messiah is saying. So all you folk thinking you, you're doing this, there, you might be thinking you're persuading, manipulating, getting people over, trying to launch attack against the Most High's people. But you're going to find yourselves, like the scripture said, think you're fighting against man, you're going to find yourself fighting against God. And believe me, like the old saying, your arms are too short to box with God. You can't stop the Most High. He loves his people. Despite all that has happened, despite the thing, long suffering is one of the fruits of the spirit and temperance. So we have to have that self control. But long suffering, we gotta suffer with them to reign with them. All praises, all praises. Hallelujah. 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 The enemy is busy as as I'm speaking. We're gonna go through the message. Hallelujah. We're in Luke chapter 18. Luke 18. And Luke was a physician, you know. He rolled with the, the, the apostles. But anyway, let's get into it. Luke 18. Talking about the Hamashiach, Christ, the Messiah, the anointed cherubim. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. We ought always to pray. I mean, sometimes you just got to be real with God. Oh, Messiah, I'm in the lion's den. And the lions have opened their mouths like Daniel. Or oh, like, like you know, they three Hebrew boys. You just got to be real sometimes. You know, sometimes that good old prayer, Oh, God, Heavenly Father, our righteous. Sometimes when you're going through, you don't be disrespectful. You honor him. You come to the, the uh, throne of grace boldly. That you tell him, like the old saints used to say, I miss my mom, the old church mothers. And uh, they used to say, tell them all about it. Hey, ooh. Itabaka shanda, rola da boboka. They used to say, tell them about it. Tell them about it. Woo, I feel the angels. And there's, a, there's an old hymn in the hymn book that says, I must tell Jesus. Anyway, let's continue. Ought always to pray and not faint. Saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regard of man. He ain't fear God, he ain't no regard for man. This is a judge, an unjust judge. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Ooh. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. So here's an unjust judge. He didn't fear God. He didn't care nothing about man. But this widow kept coming to him saying, avenge me, avenge me, and my adversary. Please, you know, she came to the judge, to the unjust judge. He wasn't, wasn't righteous. But check it out. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Because he was like, if she keeps coming, it's just going to drive me crazy and tire me out. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith. Now you hear what Yah is saying? Hear what the un... And then he says, and shall not Yah avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? And we got to cry sometimes. Because men ought always... <laughs> I don't know what she, you ought to be doing this, and you ought not to be doing that. Oh, Granny, I miss you. <laughs> but men ought always to pray and not faint. Because in the book the Bible said in the last days, men going faint in their hearts for fear was coming upon the earth. Oh no, pandemic. Oh no, it's this. Ah, ah. And already some have taken their own lives. Had a young man take his own life, as I told you, a couple of messages back, and it just really broke my heart. Uh, but but hear this, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, will the Son of Man, when he cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. We got to have faith. He's, going, he's saying, I'm going to do my part. But where is your faith? What doctrine is it in? Is it in some other false doctrine? Don't expect the most out of look out. Because he's the author and finisher of our faith, of his elect. His elect. His elect. Saints, be blessed. Know that he will see you through. Shalom.